One of the goals of the Spent Fuel Waste Disposition Program funded by the DOE is to ensure that the fuel will maintain its integrity during normal conditions of transport. A 30 centimeter drop may occur during handling operations and therefore is one of the normal conditions of transport. The SNF assemblies are loaded into a transportation cask for transport. Two impact limiters are installed on the cask to attenuate the impact force on the cask body in case of a drop. The basket, an integral part of the cask, consists of multiple 24 to 37 basket tubes. Each assembly is placed in a separate basket tube. An SNF assembly is a bundle of rods. A rod is a tube made of zirc alloy or some other alloy of zirconium cladding that is filled with fuel pellets and then welded closed. The fuel rods are supported by the spacer grids at multiple locations along the assembly. If the rods maintain their integrity, the fuel is safely contained inside them. The assembly used in the 30 centimeter drop was a surrogate assembly. The hardware, nozzles, guide tubes, and spacer grids were actual 17x17 17 17 PWR Westinghouse fuel assembly hardware. The rods of the surrogate assembly were made of copper and filled with lead rope with the correct diameter and density. No experimental data were available before this test to demonstrate the integrity of SNF cladding in a 30 centimeter drop. Though not required, obtaining this data allows for understanding the implications of handling incidents, quantifying the fuel fracture risk under NCT, and defining the transfer function from the cask to the fuel for more severe accidents. The data were collected in three different steps. The first step was a 30 centimeter drop test of a one-third scale cask equipped with two one-third scale impact limiters and loaded with 32 one-third scale dummy assemblies. The result from the one-third scale drop test showed a maximum acceleration to the lid end of the cask of 100 Gs and a maximum acceleration to the bottom end of the cask of 168 Gs. The second step was a series of 30 centimeter drops of the full scale dummy assembly. The dummy assembly was instrumented with accelerometers and placed in an actual basket tube. The felt pads were attached to the bottom of the assembly to attenuate the impact force, similar to the attenuation achieved by the impact limiters in the cask drop. After the first drop, we found that the acceleration pulses on the dummy assembly were higher than the target pulse. This meant that the impact forces were not sufficiently attenuated. The test was repeated with different felt pad configurations. In test number four, the observed acceleration pulses were in good agreement with the target pulses. Consequently, the test four pad configuration properly reproduced the effects of the cask and impact limiters. The third step was the 30 centimeter drop of the full scale surrogate assembly. From the second step, we knew which felt pad configuration adequately mimics the effects of the cask and impact limiters. By using this configuration, we generated the accelerations on the surrogate assembly in the 30 centimeter drop that were the same as if it was dropped in a full scale cask with impact limiters. The surrogate assembly was instrumented with accelerometers and strain gauges. The accelerometers and strain gauges were placed in multiple locations on three surrogate assembly rods. Pressure indicating paper was installed between the rods. It is a way to register if the rods contact each other during the drop. The instrumented surrogate assembly was placed in the basket tube and transported to the Sandia drop tower. The drop test setup was the same as in step two. The felt pads were attached to the bottom of the surrogate assembly. The felt pad configuration was the same as in test four from step two.
The high-speed cameras that were looking into the windows cut in the basket tube registered the behavior of the rods during the drop. It was obvious that the rods came into contact with each other. After the test, the surrogate assembly was removed from the basket tube and inspected. Several of the spacer grids buckled and experienced significant plastic deformation. A maximum deformation of 6.1 millimeters was observed in grid 10, shown here. The marks on the pressure paper confirmed that rod-to-rod -rod contact had occurred. The color intensity was converted to contact pressure. The maximum observed contact pressure was 4.1 KSI. It is significantly smaller than the cladding strength yield of 140 KSI. Consequently, the rod-to-rod -rod contact pressure will not challenge the cladding integrity. Maximum observed acceleration was 68 G at the bottom of the assembly, which hit the target a few milliseconds later than the top, resulting in a slapdown effect. The maximum observed strain was 1,832 microstrain, or 0.18%. The stress that cladding experiences under this strain is 22.3 KSI. Consequently, bending will not challenge the cladding integrity as well. In conclusion, a 30 centimeter drop of a cask containing spent nuclear fuel assemblies may occur during loading and unloading operations in preparation for transport. This drop is one of the normal conditions of transport. The 30 centimeter drop tests demonstrated that the stresses on the fuel assembly rods due to bending and rod-to-rod -rod contact are significantly below the cladding yield strength. Consequently, the fuel rods will maintain their integrity even if the cask is dropped 30 centimeters or less.